at hurtful things people say when you have GI disorders. God, I mean, I have heard people say these things straight to my face. Fam, it's Rachel and Rhea and we're the Gallo sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. So it is Monday, which means that we are going to be going over whatever awareness month we are choosing to celebrate. This is the last time you guys are going to see these shirts, actually. It's the last Monday in August right now. Yeah, and we, of course, are going to continue on. These don't go over as well as I would like them to because they are very informative. You have to remember that this is the life that we have to live. We don't have a choice. Do not tell us how to live. And chronic illness uh, awareness is an extremely important part of our channel. Yes, our true passion is politics. And, and me too. And me too and stuff like that. But because we are chronically sick, we have to cover this. And I mean, we follow so many chronically sick YouTubers, past and present. You know, some of them are gone. And we we just, that's some a conversation we have to keep going. Oh my god, are you a jerk? I spent hours making that food and you're just gonna sit here and be like well i can't eat it i hate you i spent so much money on this food for you and you're just throwing it away are you trying to insult me ew if i had to eat like that i would die no wonder you're so thin you don't eat anything you are i don't want to touch you i might get whatever illness you have you're contagious and gross. Oh my god. If I have to listen to you complain about the fact that you can't eat that one more time, I'm going to lose it. I want to go to the restaurant. I want to. I don't care if there's anything on the menu, if there's nothing on the menu for you to eat. I want what I want. Can't you just break your weird diet once? You can just cheat once. It won't hurt you. Just try one bite. Oh my god, I have to listen to you chatter in my ear constantly. I can't eat this, and I can't eat that. Is there something you actually can eat? People with allergies are annoying, and they just want attention. I don't like inviting them over, and I don't like doing anything with them. They're party poopers. Wow, I asked you to be here at a certain time, and you're late. What are you, hate me? You are so terrible. You get out of my life. Go away. Bye. You're a loser. I don't want you to even breathe the same air as me. You are not cool pretending to be on this hip diet. Mm -hmm. These are the type of things that we hear, that those of us with GI disorders hear all the time. Did you know that they're really hurtful? All this and more is said constantly, and it is narrow-minded and ableist. It is no different than being racist. No different than being sexist. It is disgusting behavior. And it needs to stop. So with that, we'll take a look at hurtful things people say when you have GI disorders. God, I mean, I have heard people say these things straight to my face. Everything that we just said. I mean, strangers say them. Friends say them. Family says them. I mean, it's, it happens all the damn time. I've had coworkers say it. Yeah, I mean, but when someone has a chronic illness, they can't help it. I mean, no. it's, like I've said a million times, and like plus a million more times, it's in our genetic code. I'm really sorry. For some reason, Buzz, the water's right behind us. He always gets really thirsty whenever we're filming. And we don't know why. <laughs> Anyways, and... 
people make fun of us for drinking bubbly water. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, there he goes, bubbles, bubbles one and bubbles two. They've been called that before. <laughs> or I would eat salads a lot at work because A, I love salads. They're like candy. And B, it's something that I actually can eat. And I had coworkers make fun of me for it. Uh, that is so childish. Are you trying to make me feel bad about my diet? No, this is literally the only thing I can eat right now. <laughs> and people will tell you, like, especially you look like I do, and I've said this before, skip ahead to a certain number. We'll tell you what to skip ahead when I, when I say this. When you weigh what I weigh, and no, I will never tell you that, and you can ask me a thousand times, but I will never tell you. We don't allow scales in our house. No, but here's the thing. I'll be like, well, if you just ate more, you would not be so thin. Well, that's not true, because I can't. I mean, growing up, I remember going with our mom to see the doctor, and they'd be like, oh my god, you're not eating. You're not eating. That's why you're so thin. And it's like, well, no, lady, I've eaten like 50 meals already, and you just don't understand. No, and I've said this a million times, so I'm going to keep saying it until you guys start listening to me. Things like illness makers, where they make up the fact that people have eating problems, are so hurtful and detrimental to society. It is disgusting, and it needs to stop. And I am not a large woman. I'm a very small woman, too. And people have grabbed my waist to see how petite I am, and I'm like, I have endometriosis. And I'm open about it. What about that says, grab my waist? And I'm not talking about me too or harassment. I'm just talking about, ouch, it hurts. Don't do that. I, it's women that have done it. Not men. It's women. Actually, when men do it, they're actually more careful. And, you know, not us, but some people, like, if they, well, I guess this happened to us. I mean, like, if we go, you know, eat something we're not supposed to, we might get stuck in the bathroom for several hours. It happens to Rachel and I. Even a crumb. Well, okay, so I'm wearing a giant nail. So, like, a crumb a quarter of the size of this nail can make me extremely sick. And one time at work, when I was working, I decided to make myself a sandwich. I brought my own bread, and I just went through the sandwich line at work and grabbed some things for me to eat. And I grabbed these um, olives. Call them out olives. Well, after I ate the sandwich, I started feeling sick, and I went and I looked at the column out of olives, and there were breadcrumbs in there, and I had eaten one, and I was on the in the bathroom for days, and puking, and coming out of both ends, and I felt exhausted, and like I was getting over the flu for a month, just from a tiny little speck, and do you think I eat column out of olives anymore? Well, here's, here's the other thing. No. Here's the other thing. Like, that happened to me, too. When I got initiated into Eastern Star, um, they made me a special food. But the problem is they set it right next to everybody else's, and everybody else was taking it, and it, you know, cross-contaminated itself, and it yep. made me feel really sick. Yes, a crumb can make us sick. However, one thing that I don't have a problem with is if there is a fryer, because fryers are set to a very high temperature, yeah. if... That fryer is used for gluten-free items and gluten-full items. I tend to not have a problem with it because the fryer burns all that gluten out of there. Now, at McDonald's where they dump, you know, so many chicken nuggets and breaded chicken in there, I would have a problem with that because it's used so much for gluten items. But at a lot of other restaurants where their fryers are mostly just used for fries and maybe they have um, a dessert that they fry in there or an occasional chicken nugget order, it doesn't seem to bother me. No, and... The other thing is, too, is that, like, there's a lot of food that, like, and on a given day, I have no idea what's going to trigger me to feel sick. I have no idea. Like, I don't know. Like, sometimes I can eat a salad, but lately we have not been able to eat salads. These GI disorders don't make any sense. They're not logical. They defy them, and it seems like we're making it up. But if someone says that a food makes them feel sick or nauseous or have tummy problems, you need to just believe them because it's so personal. And what you, when you met someone with a GI disorder, you've only met one person. Like, look at our dad. Our dad has gastroparesis as well. It comes from his scleroderma. If you guys want a whole video on that, we can probably do that for you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, he can sit around and he'll just eat things like ice cream, but ice cream makes us both sick. Uh, unless it's vegan ice cream. Well, vegan ice cream, yeah, but he just sits there and eats like full on like malts. And he, yeah. I don't know how he does that. But again, one person. Yeah, so our triggers may be very different. And we're saying than that another person. And we're even using our dad because I think that's very important to remember. It is very important to remember. That we share some of the same DNA as he does. Even my daughter can eat more things than I can. Yeah, I mean, GI tract disorders run in our family. I mean, when we were kids and we were growing up, we used to hear stories about our great-grandfather. And I'm not going to put his name on the channel because I don't think that's appropriate. And they used to say that he had a glass stomach. We also have a cousin that has also has problems with dairy as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, thing is, is, like, I think those GI tract disorders probably are genetic. On a subjective personal note, and this is what our chiropractor told us, if you are having GI issues, the first thing you should cut out is dairy. Because, technically, adult humans really shouldn't be eating any dairy anyways. And it's funny because the GI, like, are, bleh. It's funny because our gastroparesis intersects with our celiac disease, with our endo, and probably even to a lesser extent, our PTSD. Yeah, like we were talking about last week, G, uh, GI disorders, especially gastroparesis, rarely, if ever, come alone. They usually come with some other chronic illness, and oftentimes... They can be caused by something else, too. Well, and gastroparesis is such an, is so annoying because, you know, you may be sleeping and you may have, you may have eaten something for dinner and you may get up and you may have to, well, use the bathroom. It doesn't matter which end it comes out of. Nope. <laughs> we have type 2, which is a little bit rarer. But yes. even then, gastroparesis has been no, is no fun. Isn't it fun? Doesn't I mean, our lives sound just great? I mean, we may, you know, wind up with a GI bleed. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a few. I don't know if you ever had one, but I've had a few. I'm, I'm not, but... Doesn't mean you won't. That doesn't mean I won't. And, God, I start seeing things like what's happening in Afghanistan or in other countries where people flee for their lives. They literally run with just their clothes on their back and they jump into a plane and stuff like that. And me, I think... I don't think I would live. No. Because I would have to pull over and have to go to the bathroom or my chronic exhaustion would hit and I would just collapse or something like that. I just, I get worried in a crisis situation like that, that even the adrenaline rush wouldn't carry me as long as I needed to go. And I'm just, I guess I'm really thankful that I live in Minnesota. Well, and I think people mistaken our inability to eat something as us being snooty or frat or stuck up or whatever. It's not like we're not doing that. We're not doing it on purpose. There's nothing against you. We don't hate you. We just know that we can't do stuff like that. I cannot tell you how many books I've read or TV shows I've watched where they said, oh, I don't want to have my relatives with the allergies over. And it's just like, oh, yeah, I get it. so annoying. You definitely don't want them. What? Well, and just leave the people with the allergies that they can't control out of everything? Wow, that's really disrespectful and rude. And, you know, I've been talking a lot on here about why I had to quit my dream job, which I don't want anymore and I'm never going back to. This will be a better dream this job. This is my dream job now. But, you know, things change. Dreams change. I think one of the reasons why that new GM didn't want me around was because of my allergies. And I think... My allergies scared him, and he didn't trust me to manage them. Now, here's the thing, and I will say this. We know how to manage our own allergies. We don't need you to step in and be like, if you eat the... In the workplace, trying to get rid of someone, even if they are allergic to a lot of stuff that they're working around, guess what? That's called discrimination, and it's illegal. Yeah. I mean, where, where are we? Like, that's, that's also part of this mob two thing. No, mm -hmm. that's a new hashtag that we that this channel is going to be using a lot. Yeah. And it's like, you guys get it in your heads that, like, you are the be-all, end-all or anything. And honestly, nobody is above anybody. No. Nobody is a be-all, end-all. And, like, if somebody says, well, if you just have a bite of this, well, no, don't just, you know what, if you don't have anything nice to say, button your mouth. Yeah. Just zip it, don't say anything. And we don't want to be like Don Lemon. Oh, did you just get called out again? 
I really don't like you. And say horrible, egregious, hurtful things that are just mean. Yeah, and I would argue that it's even more difficult for a young person to have these type of GI disorders and allergies like my daughter, Emma, because, I mean, everybody throws food at kids. Pizza, pasta, ice cream, cookies, muffins, uh, cupcakes, cake. And she gets invited to things, at least, you know, she was while we weren't in COVID lockdown and there were all sorts of events. And... We'd show up to these events, and she couldn't eat anything, and they'd be like, oh, just one one cookie won't be fine, and they'd give it to her, and I'd turn around, she'd be eating it, and then we'd go home, and she'd be puking immediately, and covered in her little, like, grayscale skin. Like the chicken skin. Like, here. That. She heard her name. I saw she heard us talking. Emma heard us talking about Look, her. Look, I have chicken skin. And, uh, or... Or you'd show up and they'd be like, we got our gluten-free pizza. I'm like, there's real dairy on it. And they're like, but we spent $25 on this small pizza. I'm like, well, you should have checked with me first while you were ordering it. I'm sorry. I'm thankful that you tried. Well, we tried so hard. Can't you just eat it? No, she can't. And they're like, wow, Emma's mom's a bitch. No, I'm, I'm really not. Well, Emma, she's forcing Emma to be left out of everything. Oh, my God. God, I hate the fucking mom police. No, and the mom police hit everybody. Ah! They do it with animals, too. Yep. Even animal mommies. And <sighs> we do the best we can, given what we have. And if we're going to get sick from something, we're just not going to eat it. No. It's not worth it. We tried so hard. When we were first detoxing off from uh, gluten, she and I went to the fair. And we <laughs> ate some Tom Thumb donuts. And some cheese curds. We're not going to cheat ever again. And it'll be even worse now because it takes a couple years, like one or two years for the gluten to get completely out of our system. So when we cheated then, it would not be as bad as it would be now. Yep. And like, you guys got to understand that, you know, we didn't do anything wrong. No. And don't blame people for being sick. Like that, that's so stupid. Like, oh, but uh, you were fine yesterday, so you should be fine today. Well, no, and there was a situation once where I was not feeling well. And we talked to some people every single day, and this person got upset that I didn't want to talk to her. And there's no reason to get upset. No. And talking to people takes energy, especially for ambiverts, like ambivert. I'll spell it right here. It means that you are both introverted and extroverted. I got my account on Facebook ding one time because I, I said ambivert. So sometimes talking to people, even people we love and care about and adore, it's really hard sometimes when you don't feel good. And you know, it's never hard for me to talk to her because I live with her. Yeah, and we like know each other's like idiosyncrasies. Sometimes I wake up and she's and she's just happens to be staring at me and waiting in my bed. A cup of coffee. Be like, what are you doing in my bed? <laughs> I should record that. Oh, it'd be really funny. I really should, so you guys can see it. It's so funny. <laughs> you guys, these are this is our reality. It might not be your reality, but everyone's reality is different. We don't want to be racist or sexist or ableist, creedist or ableist or any isms. And you know, this channel is very, very, very you know, like. You know, it's very, very, very chronic illness heavy. It's very, very, very lesbian and LBGTQIA friendly and whatever else friendly. We just fit almost every, we check almost every box and we know that we're asking you to absorb and accept a lot by watching this channel. And being our friend. Mm -hmm. And I understand it's not easy and I'm not judging you if you have difficulty conceptualizing what we're trying to explain to you and but never give us like you know be like i'm gonna do i'm gonna, I'm gonna give you like one more chance just if you're gonna give no. us chances just leave don't the talk shit about us and i mean this is who we are i can't deny who i am i know that especially on twitter i have a lot of followers and friends who have gi disorders and guys what what have you experienced have has anybody ever discriminated against you have you heard any of these terrible things that we're talking about have has anybody said that about you what let's know in the comments below yeah so guys 
obviously we're on the video here and we're also going to say that this was an interesting month mm -hmm. just because the video is ending does not under any circumstances mean the conversation is going to be over in fact this is a part of who we are and if you don't like it too bad but this is YouTube land so of course there's a few things that you probably want to do first thing you might want to do is give that thumbs up a click because you know Elgar helps the algorithm out a lot. However, you could click the thumbs down button if you don't like us, but you're still helping the algorithm. And I guess you wouldn't want to give box into the garbage. So mash that subscribe button down below. Guys, we are almost at 700. This is insane. That's a little about what a little about little more than 300 people left until we can qualify for monetization. We can submit our channel to Google and get an AdSense account and get this channel monetized because that is our ticket to New York State. While you are down there, you might want to give that bell a ring so you don't miss a video or when YouTube decides to you know, tell you we have a video because YouTube isn't always very nice. YouTube is very fickle and it it's just it's just does that. Also, please make sure if you were subscribed that you stay subscribed because I did see that YouTube is unsubscribing people. Yeah. Guys, Usually we post videos every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Of course, we might also have rallies because, you know, justice is not a thing anymore. You know, you just don't like somebody. Oh, me too. Don't like somebody. Oh, they did this to me 50 years ago. That's fine. I need some money. I need Make some money. Me too allegation. One year from us on Tuesdays. And now you can't because we have a podcast on movies and TV entitled Gavin with the Gala Sisters. So we also have other social media. Follow us on Twitter at the Gala Sisters. So on Twitter, we make live announcements. We're very active over there. If a video is going to be late or we're going to miss an upload, we're going to announce it there. So make sure you follow us there. You can also DM us on Twitter. That's the easiest way to get a hold of us. Uh, also follow us on Instagram at the Gala Fam. Facebook at the Gala Sisters. We have a website at www.thegalasisters.com with three different awesome blogs. If you like to read, check that out. We also have bath bombs for sale. So they're pretty reasonably priced and they're homemade by us. And make sure that you check us out on TikTok and also share this video with your friends and family. And we thank you so much for giving us a chance and watching our videos and subscribing. We will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye. Thank <laughs> you.